Today we're taking a look at another 32 inch 4K 144Hz HDMI 2.1 gaming monitor for those looking for the perfect monitor for your PS5 or Series X and this time the entry is from BenQ with the Mobius EX3210U. Now there are already quite a bit of reviews out covering things like UFO test, speed test, things of that nature towards gaming but BenQ does advertise this as a monitor for gamers and content creators, so in addition to gaming performance, I'll talk about how it does when it comes to video and photo editing. Don't forget to hit subscribe to help me reach my goal of 25,000 subscribers and use my links in the description to support this channel. The Mobius EX3210U retails for $1,099, is a 32-inch 4K 144Hz HDR monitor with true HDMI 2.1, so no cutting bandwidth here. It's got a one millisecond response time and performance pretty much falls in line with every other 32 inch HDMI 2.1 monitor to date as they pretty much all use the same panel. For console gaming and one player adventures like Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West, the colors pop beautifully and really make for a great gaming experience. However, if you're a competitive, fast paced gamer who needs the edge when it comes to speed, I'd recommend going with a smaller monitor with something like 240 or 360 hertz in 1080p or 1440p. It's got AMD FreeSync Premium Pro to help with screen tears and display HDR600 like most of the competition in this range. It's got an advertised 300 nits on SDR mode, which tech testers measured in at 260 nits, and an advertised 600 nits on HDR mode, which measured in at 528 nits. The hardware here is really not equipped to give true HDR, but none of these 32-inch HDMI 2.1 variants are as of today, and brightness will only be a concern if you're gaming in a room with a lot of windows or a lot of light. Now, if you're like me and you game in a dark room, you'll be just fine. In fact, the previous monitor I had, the MSI MPG321URQD, performed better in terms of brightness, but it was too bright even on its lowest setting, which caused eye strain and started giving me migraines, so more brightness does not always mean better. There's one area in particular where this monitor shines that I've yet to see on a competing HDMI 2.1 monitor, and that's the built-in Travolo speakers. Much like the HDMI, it's got a 2.1 system going on with a built-in, we'll call it a mini-sub, on the back compartment. Most people seem to prefer the pop live setting, but as someone rocking a full Dolby Atmos surround sound setup in my living room and is used to an immersive environment, I much prefer the cinema setting. If you have this monitor, let me know which setting you prefer. The reason this is such a big deal is one, the speakers have no business being as good as they are, no shilling, not trying to sell a product here, just in my experience I haven't heard a better monitor speaker. And two, as I'm sure we're all familiar by now, Sony and Microsoft both remove their optical ports, meaning if you're using a monitor, you'll have no choice but to use a headset or computer speakers. And again, as someone with an Atmos surround sound setup in the living room and studio monitors here in the bedroom, I've tried a few pair and PC speakers just aren't the same. So having these great quality Travolo speakers is a win. 
It's also got a built-in noise canceling microphone, which is compatible with PC, Mac, PS4, and PS5. Not quite sure why Series X isn't listed, which could be good for something like Zoom calls, but I'd imagine it would be much more convenient for gamers just to use the microphone on your headset. A few extra goodies include HDR eye mode, which can match the brightness of your picture to the ambience in your room, light tuner, which lets you adjust the whites and blacks so darker areas like caves can be seen better while brighter scenes with a lot of sunlight or maybe snow will be more evened out. Even so, this is an IPS display, which means you'll get great colors and viewing angles, but will suffer from faded out black levels that can only be achieved with something like an OLED. As usual with BenQ monitors, you'll get eye care options like flicker free technology, low blue light and brightness intelligence plus. The screen has a good anti-glare coating. I've never been bothered by any reflection and backlight bleed is pretty much non-existent, especially during usage. My only area of complaint would be the stand as I'm just not a fan of having these large legs sticking out, taking up room on my desk and would much prefer a smaller square shaped base. If that's a concern, the monitor is 100mm by 100mm vase mount compatible, I just don't have an arm that fits my setup. I haven't really talked about the build much, but it is height adjustable up to about 23 inches, is 28.6 inches wide, and has a depth of 10.6 inches. It also swivels and tilts. It's got these four RGB LEDs on the back, which honestly don't get bright enough to make much of a difference. In addition to the two HDMI 2.1 ports on the back, there's a DisplayPort 1.4, 3.5mm audio jack, and USB hub with one upstream and four downstream ports. It also comes with this remote, which has a source button, OK button with directional ring, HDR eye mode button, game mode button, which allows you to switch between any of the three game mode presets, brightness, quick menu button, audio button to change sound presets, mute, volume down, and volume up. It comes in handy when switching between my Mac and PS5, so I don't have to reach under the monitor. Alternatively, you could just enable HDMI CEC mode, which will auto detect when the PS5 is turned on. With an advertised DCI-P3 of 98% and Adobe RGB of 97%, and I believe tech testers measured 97% sRGB, this monitor is not only aimed at gamers but content creators, which means it should perform nicely for video and photo editing. I typically use the BenQ SW321C, their current top of the line professional editing monitor, so I'm curious to see how it compares. Now you let me know what you think of the results, but I fully edited this photography session in Lightroom and Photoshop using this monitor and have put together this entire video as well. My conclusion is that nobody's going to be able to tell a difference in the end result unless you have them sitting side by side while editing. If you do end up using this to edit, I'd recommend calibrating it with something like the Spider Pro, which is what I use, but for the purpose of this video, I did all editing in the sRGB preset. That's going to wrap up today's video, but I'd like your thoughts and opinions on this monitor versus the competition. Yes, there are cheaper options out there, but I really think the Travolo speaker system gives the EX3210U an edge and will save you money instead of having to buy an expensive PC speaker system that really isn't that good. If you decide to purchase, please use the links in the description. It really goes a long way to support the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and have a great day.